What's up everyone? Today I'm going to be showing you how I made this really cool animation in Blender. It shouldn't take you guys too long to follow. Um, the techniques are relatively simple. Uh, you can see it's got this really cool corkscrew effect. Um, I've achieved that using the screw modifier and I'm looking forward to showing you how it's done. Alright, so once you've got Blender open, I'm just going to delete that default cube. So hit X, delete, and just hit Shift A. We're going to go to Mesh and we're going to add a plane. And we're going to hit G, Z, minus 1. And then we're going to duplicate that, so hit Shift D on the keyboard. It's going to duplicate that plane and we're going to hit G, Z, 2. So we have these two planes that are equal distance from each other. Now we're going to join the two objects. So if you just click on one plane and then click on the other, and you just want to hit Control J and that joins the objects together. See, now you only have one plane. Now we're going to go to Object, Set Origin and Set Origin to Geometry. That just puts the little um, origin point in the center of the object. Now we're going to come to our modifiers. So head to this little spanner here. We're going to add a modifier. And you're going to come over here to uh, screw. Now you get these two rings. That's not what we want. We want it to screw along the y-axis. So over here on axis, just change that to y. And you can kind of see where we're going with this. It's sort of created a tunnel now. Um, we're just going to change the screw length to 8. And that's going to stretch out this object 8 meters across. It's going to be a tunnel animation, so we want the um, camera movement to loop perfectly along this. And it's a lot easier if we set the um, start of the object exactly where the X and the Y axis meet. So if you hit number pad 7, alternatively hit the tilde key and then hit 8. I'll take you to top view. Now you just want to hit G, Y and 1. Just move it up 1 meter. So as you can see, the start of the object starts precisely where the 3D cursor is. This will ensure we get a perfect loop when we animate our camera. Next thing we're going to do, we're just going to instance this object. If you click on your plane, we'll call it a tunnel now. Change that to tunnel. Now if you click on your tunnel, now if you just hit M on your keyboard, we're going to add it to a new collection. And we're going to name this collection tunnel. And that's going to allow us to instance the tunnel. Now, instancing is a little bit different to actually duplicating the object. It, um, it's just a bit easier on your computer because it sort of makes a copy of it without the mesh data, if that makes sense. So you just want to hit Shift A, add a collection instance, and add tunnels. Now we're going to hit G, Y, 8. And if you go back into top view again, you'll see this starts exactly where the end of the object starts. It slots in perfectly there. That's why you want to ensure it's mathematically correct. So yeah, on that instance, hit G, Y, and 8. We're going to space each tunnel 8 meters apart. So now you want to hit Shift D on your instance, so the one you just created, and hit G, Y, 8 again. And now to repeat that process, rather than having to hit Shift D, G, Y, 8 over and over again, you can just hit Shift R and just keep hitting Shift R until you get about, say, 12 tunnels. So now you have this long tunnel, and you need to make sure you have quite a few, otherwise you'll get a little glitch when you come to the end of the loop. Uh, so now that we've got that, we're just going to animate the camera. So um, we want to put the camera at the start of the tunnel. So if you click on your camera, hit Alt-G, it's going to reset the location. Then hit Alt-R, it's going to reset the rotation. Now you want to hit RX90, and that's going to point the camera directly down the tunnel. Now if you hit zero, that's going to toggle camera mode. And as you can see, your ta your camera is going through the tunnel. Cool. Now we're going to animate it. Go back to top view. And on, on the camera, what we're essentially going to do to make this loop, we're just going to animate it going along the y-axis like that. See that orange dot? It's going to come to the end, about 16 meters, come up to here and then back again. And the way we do that is just click on the camera, bring your timeline up a bit. I want to make this a five second loop, so I'm going to change the end frame to 120. We're running at 24 frames per second, so if you do the math, that will make that a five second loop. Ensure you got your camera clicked. Right, so we're going to animate the camera. So if you just click on the camera, come to your location settings here, this uh, little orange square thing, and you want to make sure you're at frame zero. And the reason we put it at frame zero is because we're going to add motion blur later. If you have it left at frame one, the motion blur is not going to take effect on the first frame. And if you're looping it, it's going to it's going to sort of make a little 
subtle glitch that's not going to look good um, because the motion blur won't be on the first frame. It will render the motion blur if you um, apply the first keyframe on frame zero. So on your y-axis, we're going to add a keyframe on frame zero. We're going to come to 120 and we're going to change this to 16 and now we're going to add a keyframe. And now if you hit play, you'll see the camera comes to the end and then back to the start. But you notice it, you'll notice it sort of slows down and speeds up when it comes to the end of the object. Um, the reason why that happens is because we have the interpolation set to Bezier automatically. Um, so what you want to do is hit A, so you select all keyframes, then hit T and change that to linear. And now you'll get a sort of straight animation without any smoothing uh, towards the end. Now if you hit zero and you can see that in camera mode. I'm just going to turn the overlays off because we don't need these now. We're going to do some shading now. So what I want you to do, I just want you to save it quickly so uh, you don't lose any work in case it crashes. So yeah, just save as and save it somewhere that you can find it. We're going to go into render mode now. So hit Z on the keyboard, hit 8. Now the first thing I always do is come to my world settings and make the scene black. I don't know why it starts out as grey, it's quite annoying, but yeah, just make sure you've got a black scene. There should already be a light um, saved, but I'm just going to delete that. So hit X and delete that light. We'll add a new one, Shift A, light, and we'll add a point light. We're going to just drag it down into your tunnels collection. Uh, so this is the great thing about instancing. Once you pop it into, you can just pop in objects into the collection and now it's going to populate the whole tunnel we see. Now we have a well lit tunnel the whole way through. And I'm just going to pump up the wattage a bit. I'm just going to change the rate, drop the radius down a bit as well. Now when you hit play, that's going to look really cool. And you can see my computer is struggling a bit in render mode. So I'm just going to come out quickly because I want to do a quick camera animation as well. I just want to make it look a bit cooler. So hit Z and then 6. If you're struggling in render mode, you can always jump back into your viewport. Uh, I'm going to go back to my camera. So click on the camera. And I'm going to animate the rotation of uh, the camera as it goes through the tunnel. So uh, yeah, we're going to spin it on the Y axis. So Come to frame zero, add a keyframe, come to frame 120, we're going to change that to 360 degrees, apply keyframe, and same again, A, T, linear, now hit play, and it sort of twists with the, uh, with the corkscrew, I think it looks really cool. Jump back into random mode again, that's looking cool, but I think we can make it look even cooler. So I'm going to add a wireframe modifier. So come back to your modifier section and we're going to add a modifier and we're going to add the wireframe modifier. Now you can have it like that if you want. I think that looks awesome as well. But we're going to, that's essentially, it's essentially replaced all the faces and added wireframes over the uh, edges of the object. We're going to uncheck replace original and that's going to bring back the faces of the object but it's just going to add the wireframe on top and we're going to add some emission shading to the wireframes and it's going to look really cool. So to do that we need to um, start actually shading the materials of this. So we're going to come to our material section, this little uh, round thing here. We're going to add a new material. This is going to be our base material and this will be essentially the material of the tunnel and we're going to make this a sort of a uh, sort of dark color. We're going to pump up the metallic a bit and we're going to drop the roughness down just a touch to about 0.4, give it a bit more reflection. So that's uh, that's our base material for now. Um, now for the second part, we're going to add the emission shading on the wireframe. So we're going to add a new material. So this is the second material on this object. We'll add new. We'll change this surface to an emission shader so it's going to emit light. But you're going to notice it has no effect right now. And that's because we haven't actually assigned the wireframe to this shader. 
So come back to your modifier section, uh, this little spanner, click on that, down to your wireframe, and you just want to see this material thing here. Um, you want to change that to one, and that's going to assign it to the second material. And now you can see, now you have, now you can see, you get this sort of a spiral lighting effect from the wireframe, and you can change the color of that as well. So if you go back to your shader, um, back to on your material two, this is the emission. You can change that to whatever color you like and it looks really cool. In this case, we're gonna go with a nice cool blue, but we're gonna pump the strength up to about 20. Give it a nice strong emission. Now you can leave it there if you wanna render it out. I think this looks pretty cool, but um, there is definitely more you can do with it. So first thing I'm gonna do is come to my render properties. I'm gonna add ambient inclusion. I'm gonna add bloom. We're doing this in Eevee, by the way. Um, yeah, so add bloom, just Expand that, just drop the intensity down because the EV bloom is really strong. So we'll put it to about 0 0.011. And then you want to add screen space reflections. And this is going to allow the light to reflect a bit more off the material. And now we're going to add motion blur. And that's just going to, well, that's pretty self explanatory, really. Now you can see that's really brought it to life, but there's still more I want to do with the um, the base material of the tunnel. So I'm going to go back to my material settings, and now I want you to uh, come to the top corner of the screen. You see your cursor turns into a little uh, cross. You just want to drag this window in, and we're going to open up the shader editor. So on this little thing here, click on that, and you can change that to shader editor, and just drag that in. And this is a node-based editor, so what you see in here is exactly what you get there. You can just go in a bit more depth. So um, you can see we've got our emission shader, and when we start changing the color, it affects the color on the right menu as well. We're going to go to Material 1 and add a little bump texture to this, just to uh, give the scene a bit more sort of uh, detail. So hit Shift-A in your node editor. Come to vector and add bump and just pop that here and you want to plug the normal into the normal and we're going to use a texture to create a sort of intricate pattern in the metal work. So hit shift A again and come to texture and we're going to use a Voronoi texture which I think looks really cool. Pop that there and I want you to plug the colour into the height and you're going to see this really cool pattern start to form on the metal work. Of the, uh, of the tunnel. You can play with the scale as well. If you pump the scale up, you're going to get sort of more uh, more of the crackle. And if you drop the scale down, obviously, it's going to have the opposite effect. But just pop it to somewhere you like. I think about there looks cool. Right, I'm going to wrap it up there, guys. Uh, there are some other cool things you can do. Uh, you could um, you could play around with the color, and you could actually animate it as well. I've played around with that, and you get some cool effects if you do that. One last thing I'm going to do. I'm going to come to color management and I'm just going to give it sort of medium high contrast I think looks a bit better in my opinion I'm just going to jump out of render mode so hit Z and then 6 just because my computer is struggling a bit so the only thing left to do now is to render the animation so if you come to your output properties on your output properties just put it somewhere you can find it change your file format to FFmpeg video and coding we're going to put that to mp4 leave the video codec as h264 and output quality set that to perceptually lossless and just come over to render and hit render animation and you're done right thank you guys for watching i hope you enjoyed the tutorial if you did please leave a like and subscribe it really helps you grow the channel uh, i'm looking forward to seeing what you guys come up with with these techniques i've showed you uh, feel free to tag me in your renders, that's at Nemmotion, and if you do, I'll repost and share it on my story. If you're having trouble with the tutorial, I'll be leaving a link to the project file. Uh, you can find it on my website as well, that's nemmotion.co.uk.